So good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, topic today is um, market condition. And it's something I talk about a lot. This is an old presentation that um, I had, and I'm not gonna go through the old presentation, but uh, I talk about market condition all the time. Because one of my major failings um, in trading early on, I did a, a class years ago that um, was called um, Confessions of a Yo-Yo Trader. And one of the major issues that I had in trading is I would treat the market as if it was always the same was trying to trade the market as if it was always the same, that there was never a change. I mean, for example, um, this entire month so far, and even prior to that, coming all the way back over into here, okay, we've had about a month, um, getting close to two months of really wild price volatility. How many of you would agree with that? It's been really volatile, really challenging market condition. You can have a great trade. Everything's looking good. It's a great entry in the trade. The market reverses overnight, making it very, very challenging to trade. So it was, it was one of those reasons and, and one of the things that I used to say in Confessions of a Yo-Yo Trader is I would I would have periods of time in my trading where my P&L was looking good. I was going up, things were looking really, really good. And then I would all of a sudden start getting these massive drawdowns. And unfortunately, those drawdowns would often end up being further down than where I'd started. And and then I, things would come around and I, okay, I've got this now. I finally got this. Finally got this. And what I was doing oftentimes is I would, I would change up everything. During this period of time, I'm doubting everything. Right? Just doubting everything. Hating on myself. So I would change everything and start over, basically. And I'd end up yo-yoing uh, back up and, you know, and then just be right back down here. And what I was doing is pretty classic. It happens all the time in the market, is that we don't recognize changes in the market condition. We choose not to recognize want the market to always be a straight line, smooth. Um, we, we want it to always be bullish. Okay? There's very few people in, in uh, trading that are true bears all the time that just want the market to be bearish. Okay? We all feel more comfortable with the buy low to sell high in the market, and we don't want to recognize a change. We want to just keep doing the same thing we've always been doing and expect it to have the same results even though the market has changed. Well, one of the things that I had to do is I had to start studying harder the market condition and adapting my trading to that. Somebody asked the question the other night, you know, um, I'm using the 3 eight trap. I'm, 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 uh, I'm trying to pick out good trades, but the next day I'm getting whipped out of the trade. What's the answer to that? When the market becomes more volatile, I want to do less trading. I, I look at my trading as where are my odds? Okay. Um, would most of you out there agree when volatility goes up, even the best technical trader, would you say their odds of winning goes down?
Yeah, that's normal. Okay, and, and that's going to be normal for anyone. It doesn't matter who it is. When the volatility is high and it's wild and random all over the place, we are going to have worse results, particularly in any directional trading, if we don't recognize that market condition and we try to continue to trade with the same intensity and the same kind of trades that we had before. Now, options provide me the ability to keep trading, but I, I change. I change from being a directional trader to more of a spread trader, a premium collector during high volatility times. I want to reduce my long directional trading, my short directional trading, and be in a position where I'm more of a premium collection guy getting away from price. Okay? And taking advantage of that volatility by removing um, that directional risk from the equation. Okay, but if you don't know how to spread trade or do things like that, well, what's the best thing you can do? I mean, if you tally up the market condition right now, guys, with this volatility, and you, you agreed with that statement that even the best technical trader in a high volatility market will have less odds of winning, if you're not a spread trader or someone that knows all of those those different strategies, what's the answer? If my odds of making money are less, trade less. Reduce my activity during periods of time like that. And that's what I had to do years ago before I was really doing much in options is during those really volatile times, I recognized that what was happening is I was yo-yoing my account. What would had worked before is suddenly not working, and I had to recognize that and stop. You know, um, there is one, the, the next slide in this presentation, I think does, um, does make sense sense on that I, I closed it down but it says is every day a great day to trade not every day is a great day to trade we have to be willing to recognize that particularly as swing traders now if you're intraday trading hey there's trades always as long as something's moving there's trades and it really can be true in swing trading but you've got to be much pickier about the trades that you take I mean there's there's trades to take even on the put side today okay on the downside with such a big move in the market there's trades so you can take directional that are showing that potential failure of the market okay or a failure of the stock. So we need to take into account that market condition. Are we in a smooth trend? One of the things that I always look at, well, you can look here at the diamonds. You see anything smooth about that? Nothing smooth about that, right? Do less trading. If all you do is directional trading, do less trading until that straightens up. Okay? Are you trading with the direction of the market trend? And this is something that um, we've been talking about a little bit here in Right Way Options. Um, in this move to the upside, there's really, there's been no rest or pullback. In fact, what we've done is just gone parabolic. How many of you think, looking at this chart, we're closer to a profit-taking pullback than we are buying a additional extension to the upside? But how many of you look at this chart and feel that, oh my gosh, I'm missing out, I gotta buy today? If we were going to exploit price action to the best ability of ourselves, should we be buyers today or sellers?
think about that carefully. I don't want to be buying up stock today. It doesn't mean it can't go higher, but I don't want to be a buyer today. We're parabolic in these moves. We're up too many days in a row. We're too stretched out. And here in the diamonds, all we're doing is just coming into downtrend resistance. Wouldn't you say that this area here is the exact place where we could find selling? When we looked back in history, if this were to fail here, would anybody be surprised that that sold off here? Nope, it's just following trend. But we as traders will tend to blind ourselves to that idea. Yeah, take profits, right, Mike? Rather than being a buyer. Take profits. Okay. So think about that market condition you're in and be willing to see the chart for what it is. I did something the other day that uh, in RWO, I think it was just yesterday. Um, I just changed this to a line chart. If you look at the diamonds here on that line chart, let me widen that out so it's easier to see. How many of you look at that chart and say, I have a trend and it's bullish? Anybody say that? We have a relief rally back to price resistance, right? Yeah, exactly. But isn't it interesting when we come to the market and we get this big gap up, the only thing we can think about is I gotta hurry up and find a chart. I gotta get long. I got, I'm, I'm missing out, I gotta get long. And oftentimes what I would do in, in chasing that move to the upside is I would um, get in the trade just exactly just before the market took a little bit of a rest. It doesn't mean it pulls back or breaks down. I'm not suggesting that the diamonds is going to be down here. But I don't think anybody would be all that surprised if this did this. Just rested for a little while or consolidated for a little while. Right? So recognize the condition of the market that you're in. And one of the little tricks that I did years ago, it's the stupidest thing in the world, but it worked for me. And that was, I would take a post-it note and I would have a green post-it note and I would have a red post-it note and I would have a yellow post-it note and this as stupid as this is this is just you know racing colors right okay green is bullish bearish neutral Okay, just neutral in the market. Okay, and what I would do is every single day before the market opened, I would evaluate the market condition and I would choose one of those. And I would take that post-it note, and if this was your trading platform screen, I would paste that note right below the button that says, execute a trade or buy a position right below it. So when I had that knee jerk reaction response and I would go over and I'd get ready to make that decision to pop that, that button, I would see that card and then I would have that second where I would say, is this really what I want to do? If we don't adapt ourselves to the market condition, we put ourselves in a situation where we're going to get more losses in our trading. 
but we want to think about think carefully about that market condition and how should we be responding to it now please understand I'm not saying that in a market condition that we're in right now where we're testing resistance that there's not long trades or there's not ways to make money in the market that's not at all what I'm saying okay there's always a bull chart out there someplace but I want to reduce the amount I'm trading I don't want to be aggressive here okay if I wanted to trade something today I might be uh, I might be more inclined um, let me take back here. I might be more inclined to be looking at um, something like Coke that's holding up. Okay, there's still bullish charts out there to be had, but one of the things I don't want to be doing is I don't want to be chasing something that's already extended to the upside. W Day looked at this one a couple of times today. Holy cow, what a move in the last three days. Is this the time to be chasing this as it's coming into this resistance? It's the worst possible time to be buying it. If I owned it, from this higher low, I buy stocks at or near price support and trend. I sell stocks at or near price resistance and trend. So up here, I'd be looking to take the profit off or hedge it in some way if I wanted to hold it for a longer period of time. We have to recognize that market condition. The market condition is suggesting we're probably closer to a little bit of rest, a little consolidation, maybe even a little profit taking wave in the market. So on big daily moves, like a big swing like we've got here today, I'm more inclined to take profits than to buy new trades. I look at the chart and say, what is the best way for me to exploit the current price action to this market? I don't come to the market with the anticipation that, oh my gosh, it's up big. I've got to just be buying with both hands in the trade. Okay. So I hope that makes some sense to you. Um, that simple little thing of the, the green, red, and yellow saved me a lot. It, it helped me remember what that market condition was. I do that evaluation in the morning and then the emotion of the day would take over and I would get all wrapped up in what was happening here and lose focus and, and end up over trading or chasing stocks that I shouldn't have been in and then just be ultimately surprised that my win-loss ratio was going down that I was getting beat up how can I be going down how can I be losing money when the market is just so ragingly up you know at the moment well, because, dummy, I'm buying it right at the exact wrong time. And I did it over and over and over. And until I correct myself in that market condition and temper that emotion with logic, rules, and guidelines that I follow, you improve your win-loss ratio and you don't have the major drawdowns. Sure, certainly you're going to lose money in trading just like everyone does. Okay, You're going to lose money, but overall you're not going to have the major drawdowns because when they start to occur you stop trading or change to meet the market condition. Okay, is this making sense? Everybody getting what I'm Putting down here now a couple of ways that I look at that market condition to really enforce or enhance that market condition I'm always looking every day at the VIX okay we went from down here where the our VIX is you know 11 okay for a long long time we were down in here and then suddenly we popped up and I told everyone the watch the morning market prep it's not that first move up is what something you worry about it's if it holds the higher low okay so when the VIX is rising we know 
that volatility is higher, fear is higher, big point moves, big swings, whipsaws are more likely. I want to trade directionally less. I want to take advantage of that implied volatility with spread trades and things like that, but I want to trade less to prevent the drawdowns. I don't know about you guys, but I don't sleep very good at night if I've got a bunch of long positions on when the market is showing me a VIX that's way up here. Okay? Because we have that chance that it could completely reverse on me overnight and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't control it. Nothing I can do about it. So I don't want to be in that position. I want to respect that, that fear that's in the market and I want to do less. I want to be more precise in the trades that I take, more deliberate in the trades I take and I want to do less directional work. Okay. Then I always look at the T2122. Now I know T2122, people look at this and say, well, this doesn't help me out at all. It just doesn't help me out at all. And I like to tell people it's because you're not using it right. <laughs> and that sounds kind of mean, but it really is the case. Okay. There has never been a time you can take T2122 as far back as you want. There has never been a time when T2122 is up here that a pullback isn't coming, not once. And all the history of T2122, it doesn't mean it's gonna to happen tomorrow or today, it means it's coming, okay? It's not predictive of the hour or the time. I'm not trying to predict it, okay? What I'm looking at this is saying we're in an overbought situation. We're nearing a very critical overbought situation. This morning we were clear up here near the top. We're overbought in T2122. So I know we could stay up here, we could linger up here, but we're closer to a rest or a pullback in the market than we are a buy point. So if I'm long positions, I want to be a net seller up here, not a buyer. Exactly. Time to manage risk. Tighten up stops. Exactly right. Move those stop losses up or just close out some or even all of the trade to capture those profits. Okay. I'm not using this for timing entries. And that's too many people are trying to predict the market rather than just move with the market condition. They're getting beat up trying to predict an unpredictable market. Move with the market condition when we're stretched up here. Be a profit taker. Push those stop losses up. Uh, I hear you, GB, and it's okay. It's okay if you're uncomfortable, and this is something that people have to learn. It's okay when the market odds are not in your favor to stand aside. Cash is a position. It's okay. Just because the market op is open doesn't mean you have to put money at risk if you're not comfortable with the market condition. Cash is a position. Okay. Exactly right. Exactly right, Ed. So when we're up here, do less long trading. Start thinking about profit taking, tightening stops, maybe even taking a look at weak stocks for the potential short. Okay. 
When we're down here, this is when we start thinking about long. We're just, we're, I'm moving with the market condition. I'm not predicting the market condition. And I think there's a very big difference here in what a lot of people th assume that all indicators are supposed to do. It's supposed to predict what's going to happen next. I don't think any indicators predict what's going to happen next. And specifically in high volatility markets, there's nothing that predicts what's going to happen next. But I know when we're stretched out to the upside, I've got to start looking for the likelihood of a pullback because you can, again, it doesn't matter, go back. We can linger up here, but it always comes down. Always. So don't be chasing to the upside when we're all stretched out. And that's an important thing to understand here. Um, I always use T2108. T2108 is a percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average. If it were me, it would be the 50-day. I didn't write the indicator. But it's just the percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average. Now, certainly, we've come up a lot here today. We've got above 50%. So that's bullish. Okay, We're breaking back through. This is bullish on this current run to the upside. T2122 is telling me that we're probably reaching a point where that crescendo is going to happen here relatively soon. Okay. So I'm always looking at how many stocks are above the 40 day. I'm always looking at how many stocks are above the 200 day. Okay, and I've got when we're above 50%, half of the stocks are back above the 40 day, half the stocks are back above the 200 day, the bulls are in control. Okay, but that's all they are here right now after this big extension to the upside. They're in control, but we're at the top of a range. So once again, I want to take advantage of this upside move by taking profits or doing premium collection strategies in the market. Okay? I don't want to be chasing along here. I wrote in the morning blog, and, and I, I get it, a lot of people don't. Heck, I don't even want to read stuff <laughs> in the morning. Show me a video I don't want to read anymore. This is what I wrote the last statement in the blog. The relief rally is starting to get long in the tooth and perhaps today's data can, can continue to inspire the bull higher. However, we should not be surprised to see a little profit taking begin at any time. That said, avoid chasing with a fear of missing out. Okay. Markets like this inspire a lot of emotion and get people to do dumb things. And I used to follow that. I used to let that emotion allow me to do those dumb things. And consequently, I yo-yoed my account up and down. I wasn't trading with the market condition. I was trying to predict it all the time. I was always trying. I was reactionary trades rather than truly doing a good planning of what that trade risk and profitability and stuff might be in that trade. Okay, too much reactionary trading. Um, and then I'm always looking at our T2101, which is the market breadth. <clears throat> okay, our last high in the market here before that big sell-off was here. Okay. We're pushing back up dramatically in the market. And we're here. We're starting to lose momentum. And that's what I look at T2101 as, the momentum of the market. 
as we stretch to the upside and we stretch and stretch, think about it this way. Everybody has got a finite amount of capital, okay? And all of that capital gets moved into the long position and then it starts to diminish in momentum because it's all in. Then we have to start looking for that to ebb, to pull back. It doesn't mean bearish. It doesn't mean we collapse. Okay, but we look for that momentum to ebb and pull back a little bit. And it can be just a consolidation or a pullback. How many of you looking at the index charts right now would say it would be a very healthy thing? And I know nobody wants to say this because nobody likes the idea of a market consolidating. But how many of you would say it'd be really healthy for the market here to rest for a period of time? Consolidate to give us a platform to trade from. What I don't want to see it do, although it's possible, is whipsaw this right back down. Because we've created no support in this rally. Very, very common practice. We rally up sharply and come back down and test it again. I don't want to see that happen here, particularly if you're a bull in the market, but that's a common thing to see. We did the same thing here, rallied up big, came back. With the volatility of the market being so high, we cannot rule out the possibility of that, right? Now maybe we just pull back to here, pick up some of that support. But how many of you can hold those long positions if that occurs? Okay. Now, a profit-taking pullback doesn't necessarily mean collapse. Usually on a volatile move like this, we see how consolidations start often. There'll be a little period will shoot up, a little period of volatility, and then it really starts to shrink. So we could see a little volatility in here and then a little shrink. That's healthy for the market to do. If it were just to rest in here and just do a modest little pullback and rest, Awesome, volatility drops out. This gives us better opportunity for a potential trade. Okay. And the 3 8 trap guys can help you with this on every trade that you take. We talked about this on Tuesday night, but the 3 8 trap, all these lines, the 3 8 trap, this is the crossover. We have had no hold of support yet. The crossover trade fails 50% of the time. Crossover, zoom, 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 collapse. Fails 50% of the time. So the healthy thing for this market to do now is consolidate or rest. I'm not saying it's going to do that, but to consolidate or rest to put in a platform to be able to trade from to give us a higher low that gives us confidence that the bulls or the institutions are continuing to support. Is it entirely possible on this rally up here, guys, this big spiking move that what ha is happening here is institutions selling to the retailers? Isn't that what happened here? When we push back to the top and we're overbought, and that's that other high point that you saw in um, the uh, breadth was right here. That was that other high point. We peaked and then we peaked and we're rallying up here, but we haven't quite made that breadth strong enough to get back up there yet may still do it.
it, it's exactly right, Christopher. It still could fail and take us all the way back down. We have to look at that possibility. I hope that doesn't occur because if that occurs, I think we're in a bear market. Okay, but if that occurs, I certainly don't want to be a buyer here, and I certainly don't want to be a buyer here with that market condition if this just has to modestly pull back and rest. And I really don't care, even if it pushes higher before it does that. I don't care. We're still at the top of the range. We're still overextended. More extension doesn't make that any better. It makes the situation worse. Okay. So the 3.8 trap, anytime we get that cross over that we can't hold a higher low, we run the risk of a full-on pullback. The whipsaw that we saw here. Okay. It must hold a higher low. And then we'll have the clue that the bull, the institutions are holding strong. They're willing to keep this market up. And we would look for buy signals then for that hold. Okay. And that's the current market condition. It's kind of in a scary place here, the market. Um, and if you're honest with yourself, most of you who are trading the market right now are pretty nervous, right, about the situation here. Pretty nervous about your positions. There's probably a lot of micromanagement going on in trading right now in your trades because you are so nervous about your trading. Big whipsaws are getting the best of you, getting the best of the emotion. We'll try to work closer with the market condition. You'll have better results in your trading and you'll feel more comfortable in your trading. So one of the purposes for the morning market prep is it, it's something that I started doing years ago. I just started recording it. And that's all it is. It's to help me visualize the market condition. If you guys notice every single morning I look at the indexes, what if the bulls find inspiration? What if the bears find inspiration? I never ever predict it's going to go up or going down. I look for the risks and the upside potential every time I look at a chart. Because I personally don't care which way it goes. I just want to make sure when I'm getting into a trade that I have a low risk trade. I'm working with the market condition, not against it. Okay, I don't care which way it moves. I'm just looking for the entry that takes advantage or exploits that market condition. Does that make sense? And I never want to be in positions where I'm, 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 I'm not sleeping. I'm really worried. You know, the market closes and I'm, I'm long and man, there's nothing I can do about it till tomorrow. And I look at the futures overnight and they're down and I'm dreading it and I'm feeling all of this pain and pressure um, going on because I'm, I'm really fighting the condition of the market. We will know when the diamonds becomes bullish again be hard to see and the volatility will always be less when markets rest consolidate pull back the volatility of the market declines and we get less volatility for those entries over here we can have more confidence but here's the thing what would happen with me and show of hands how many of you have done this I would be so beat up in my account from all the losses chasing a move like this, when the real trading started, I was so beat up I couldn't trade. I would, I would miss the good trades because I, would, I had wrung myself out 
biting the market at the wrong place. And by the time it was time to trade again, I couldn't pull a trigger. Or I'd lost so much money that I couldn't trade the way I wanted to trade. And I know I'm not the only one that's done that. Only Mike, only Mike said yes there. <laughs> Maybe I am the only one. But when we start getting beat up, when we get sensitive, uh, um, uh, losing and losing and losing and losing in the whipsaws, by the time it calms down and the good trades show up, we can't execute because we've been overly beat down. We start questioning everything. We question ourselves, we question, question our strategy, we question everything. That happens. So I don't know if you guys have any questions. I've got a little bit of time here to answer some questions before Rick comes on. I don't really have much more to say about this, but I, I cannot tell you how important it is to recognize the market condition and to work with the market, not against it. Just move with the flow of the market. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it sounds mean when I say this stuff, but it really is true. Uh, Mike, that successful traders are the ones that will look at the past and admit their mistakes and work to prevent them from happening again. But so many traders won't look at the past. They just want to do what they want to do. And I can tell you for me, if I hadn't made that correction, I was going to the path of quitting trading, not being broke in trading. Now, I, I have always been in business and my business was doing well, so I, I, wasn't, I wasn't truly going broke, but I was getting ready to quit because what, what the heck with this market? It, it, um, I was losing so much money in it. Breaking account, you know, I'd never broken an account, but I came really close to doing it. And just finally had to wise up and work with the market condition, not fight the market condition. No, I'm still in the SPY credit spread. Um, the rule on my trade is that I have to be worried about a close above my stop area, that the price is going to close above that. I think there's still a possibility we could pull back yet today, and I'll be fine. Okay. So, no, I haven't closed it yet. I am down on that bear call spread on the SPY, though. And it's one reason that I didn't put on bear call spreads in several indexes. Because I, I said it when we put the trade on, there's risk in taking this because of the data coming out tomorrow. I personally thought the data coming out today was not going to be this good. But I was wrong. And again, that's what predicting does for you. But and that's why I just didn't over trade it. Oh, I'm still I'm still away in the trade. SPY. My short strike is here. So I'm not even into my short strike yet. But if we close above here, I'm going to close this trade. Okay. And, and, and by the way, my win-loss ratio on credit spreads really high. So something like this happens once in a while. But it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. I'm not losing a lot of money on this. Okay. And I still think there's a possibility we could catch some selling in the close. We might not. And then I'll just close this trade before I'm into the heavy risk of the position. 
Okay, that's the way I set up every trade. Okay, I have a plan to execute. And then I follow the plan. Exactly right, Mark. Exactly right. Um, I'm going to break on Mark here for just a second. Mark, um, Mark has turned his trading around. He has identified micromanagement was a major problem for him, so he made changes on that. And he reviewed his past trades, found out where his mistakes were. And the last time he reported to us in the room, um, he's running over 80%. I think it was like 84% win-loss ratio. Because he did the work. Still at 84% mark? Because he did the work. And it's not easy work to do. Not easy looking at yourself and saying, I'm screwing up. But I'm telling you, it has to be done. Okay, reviewing your past trades, finding out where those repetitive mistakes are happening. And that's how I changed. You know, for example, to tie it to market condition, always chasing stocks into price resistance trying to be long here. Worried I was missing out. Repeating that mistake over and over and over. Always being reactionary. Rather than looking at the chart and saying, what is the best way for me to exploit this current price action? Right? And it may not be a directional trade. It may be just keeping your money safe. Remember, cash is a position. For retail traders, it's not used enough. Get this, I, it's kind of like a gambling addiction. The market's open, so I got to have money at risk. No, you don't. So thanks for being here today. Hope you got something out of this. Um, I really do appreciate it. Hope it was meaningful to you. Um, I'll get out of the way here so Rick can get logged in and ready to go. Um, uh, if you guys have any questions about this, always feel free to ask me at any time about this. But try to identify those places where you're, you're chasing the market Try to identify those simple things that you can do to work with the market condition, not be fighting the market condition. And you'll do better in your trading. And, the, you know, the other thing is you're going to enjoy your trading more. Because you're just going to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm working to be in sync with the market. What I was before as I was constantly out of sync with the market. All right, guys, have a great afternoon. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. RVO folks, I'll see you back over there. We'll do the wrap up of the day here before too long. Take care. Have a great one. Enjoy uh, the next two presentations from Rick and John. Take care, everyone.